Penstemon is a beautiful plant producing trumpet-like flowers, very much like foxgloves. They offer a deep range of colours and have a long season. Having propagated these a couple of times now, I can offer a detailed guide to propagating Penstemon, which you won't see anywhere else. Our bitterly cold winter took a heavy toll on our plants, but my two Penstemon specimens just about survived, albeit battered and knocked over by the heavy snow. But this gives rise to the first survival tactic of Penstemon. When it gets heavy and tired, for some varieties, the branches flop to the ground and upon making contact, they start to put out nodes along their stems to start rooting. Simultaneously, the stem tips turn upwards as new growth continues. This gives us a good cue that there are likely root nodes forming nearby, as we can see here. So taking cuttings to include these root nodes is going to dramatically increase our chances of propagation success. What we are looking for then are root nodes which are already present, rather than taking cuttings at leaf nodes and hoping roots will form there. These root nodes don't only form at the ends of new branch growth touching the ground, known as green or softwood cuttings. Once you start to recognise what they look like, you'll soon start seeing them growing on older wood as well, known as hardwood cuttings. This means you can take cuttings from many different parts of the plant, as you can see here. So in this video, I'm going to take several cuttings, pot them up, and then we're going to review their success or otherwise in their propagation. Beginning with some softwood or green cuttings, here from my penstemon in a bucket, this poor specimen took quite a beating from the snowfall over winter and has a lot of dead wood on it. But there are some tips that have some fresh growth and some root nodes which we have already seen. I'm simply going to cut these as my first set of cuttings. I'll then tidy up the rest of the plant later by cutting off the dead wood. Now moving over to the potting up process and all I'm going to be using are four inch pots with common garden soil. Nothing at all special about this. It's not any fancy compost, just plain soil. Penstemon will happily root very quickly, even without any rooting hormone. Another thing you'll note I'm not doing is giving any consideration for removing many, if any, leaves. I don't care about transpiration losses risking losing the cutting from striking that is taking root. I'm confident that it will root because the roots are already there. If anything, I expect some of the leaves to die off before the new growth takes off, indicating the success of the strike. The only thing I'm doing is cutting the stem down enough so it can fit into the pot. If there's a curve in the stem, I'm taking that into account in how I accommodate it in the soil in the pot.
I just had to slow the video down for this one because look at the spectacular root nodes on this stem. So all I'm doing is I'm cutting it a little bit shorter so it can fit in this pot. It's a, la a slightly larger pot as well. Um, but I thought that this one was such a good one to show in normal speed because there's so many root nodes on it. So this one's going to be a really good one to watch. Now we come to my main penstemon planted in my front garden and here there is a lot more hardwood as it has grown much more vigorously over the last two years. Being in the ground has meant it has had much more ground to spread its roots out to making this a stronger plant. On this we can also see the older root nodes. I'm going to be taking a variety of larger cuttings and we'll see how these perform. This penstemon also suffered in the winter and was blown over, so after I took my cuttings, I also staked it up with some fresh canes. Continuing with potting up, I needed some rather larger pots and I potted up one year old semi hardwood and older fully hardwood cuttings with the same lack of care as before. No special compost mixes, no rooting hormones, just some moist soil. This large hardwood one with lots of root nodes is going to be interesting to watch. And this small hardwood one is also going to be interesting as it doesn't have much green growth on it. So there's all the cuttings done. We'll see how they progress in a moment. We can now see the progress of these penstemon cuttings nine weeks and three days later. I'm going to give my assessment on all of them, successes and failures, and anything that happened along the way. Starting with this pot, and unfortunately, on one day I managed to fall backwards and step onto this pot, breaking one of the cuttings. Unfortunate, but I'm going to have to count that as a failure. The other cutting in the same pot managed to survive my footprint and is doing quite well.
These two cuttings in this black pot are doing quite well, and you can see the new curve upwards of the central stem's new growth. This third pot is the one that contains the very interesting small hardwood cutting I mentioned earlier. It did not have much green growth on it. Here you can see it has progressed quite well with the green growth and there is even small fresh growth right at the soil level. Of the other two cuttings in the same pot, we can see one further good success and one failure. Pot number four has two further successes and one failure. Pot number five has one small success and one complete failure. The failure was probably too far gone at the time of the taking of the cutting. Pot number six was another two softwood cuttings that have worked. Pot number seven contains three further successes, but also two failures. Now pot number eight is very, very interesting. It took me a while to review the previous video, but this is the one which I slowed the video down for earlier on because I wanted to point out the amount of roots and just look at the amount of growth on this beauty. I'm pretty sure this is the one I pointed out earlier on. Lastly, pot number nine is the large pot with the hardwood cuttings. About four or five weeks in, the top foliage was really loading the progress of this from striking, so I took my pruners to it and lopped the top two thirds off it. As you can see, it is starting to recover and has some fresh growth. The other one didn't make it, though it may still be alive and pick up later. So overall, I'd say that's about an 80% success rate. Pretty good for a zero cost propagation of Pentstemon stock. And I now have plenty of options for where I'm going to plant them. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.